the battle of the trench when the Muslims were uh, greatly outnumbered because the non-Muslims, anyone knows the numbers of the non-Muslims who were about to invade Medina and the the Ghazwat uh, al-Ahzab 10,000 people where, where were they from? Quraysh who else? Ghatafan, excellent Quraysh, Ghatafan, these are the main parties the other ones were like Banu Murra, Banu Ashja, Banu Asad. So now the Prophet ﷺ, the narrations indicate that the, the Muslims were 1,000 or 1,400, 1,500 people. Imagine 1,500 people are meant to fight 10,000 well-equipped soldiers who are determined to annihilate the Muslims, get rid of them for good. Now the Prophet ﷺ, had to come up with something new because according to the traditional war they, they had no chances of winning that battle so they had to come up with something special okay mashallah you're capturing attention yes you know. so the prophet ﷺ was searching for a, a, for a plan that comes from outside that box the traditional way of thinking who came up with the idea Salman al-Farisi what was the idea? Digging a trench. Medina was naturally fortified and was immune to any army because it had these volcanic uh, areas. They call them in Arabic lava. And some of the scholars say this is where the word lava comes from. Lava, that's the, the liquid, the, the melted or the melting stones. Okay, but you can see so far, yeah. he, he, he's, in, he's in the middle. He's in the middle, mashallah. Okay, uh, yeah, so basically, basically the Prophet ﷺ, uh, Medina was fortified from east, west, and the south. Any army that would march through these areas, the volcanic, volcanic rocks, now these are very pointed, very sharp. It was almost impossible to break into Medina through them. So the only uh, entrance to Medina was from the northern frontier, from the north. So this is why Ghatafan and Quraysh, the all, the, their encampments were to the north of Medina. Now the Prophet's idea, or the Prophet's plan, based on the advice of Salman al-Farisi, was to dig a trench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If he could carry on. I had a, like a, you know, a proper scissor. And yes. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. You can go through it right now. khair, yes. Do you see? Someone thought outside of the box. Excellent, mashallah. Anyone curious how to make this? Anyone still hasn't, hasn't come to see how he made it? Okay, you, do you know where, where the limitation comes from? I'll just finish with the Ghazwat al ahzab So the Muslims dug the trench. Now when Quraysh and Ghatafan, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah. When Quraysh and Ghatafan came to the borders of Medina, they were shocked because this is something they've never seen in their lives. So they were basically baffled. So psychologically, they were defeated. Right from the beginning, imagine 10,000 people are coming to fight about 1,500 people. How many times over were they? At least seven, seven, eight times. You see? So the Prophet, ﷺ, anyone who thinks that the Prophet ﷺ just did things haphazardly, thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us if we put our trust in Him, but still you have to do something. You have to exert yourself, you have to exhaust all the possibilities available to you. So this kind of example, is the same, uh, it follows from the same principle. The Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they thought outside of that box. They, they were not limited by the traditional uh, warfare or plans, available plans for war. So they came up with something new. For those who are curious to know how it is, do you know where the boundaries, the main boundary that we place, which is not real? Is people think that you have to put your finger or your head or your body through this paper straight away your thought goes to the frame of that so you cannot break it you think that you cannot break it you see so this is when I said someone I want someone to let their body go through this sheet of paper straight away we thought how could someone go through this frame isn't that true but the only condition I gave you is that you cannot cut and connect you can cut but you cannot connect after you cut so basically this frame you can break it you can just break it it doesn't make any difference you see so, you get something similar to that. It's a much easier way. Yeah. So, 
And the reason why I put this, oh, I gave this example is just because it's very practical, we can relate to it, and we will see, inshallah, as we proceed, that the Prophet ﷺ had this kind of, of thinking, this kind of style of dealing with different things. And this is basically follows from something that we, of one of the fruits of Iman that we, all of us can get. And as I talked yesterday about the, the treasure that we all have, but unfortunately we don't really appreciate. We will try to learn the habit of how to appreciate what we already have. Okay, you see this? Now I don't have to connect this, I can cut this in the middle. You cut this in the middle, and all what you get is a very wide frame that you can go through. I don't want to waste more time with it. Uh, can you do that for me? Do you understand that? Just keep it connected from the, from the edges, yeah? And just cut it in the middle. Okay. Now, uh, going back to the most important points. You can give it to anyone to do it, no problem. Don't, don't bother with that. Now, what are the six articles of faith? The six articles of faith. Please answer by putting your hand up. The six articles of faith? One, one, yes, one, one at a time. You believe in Allah. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you believe in the angels. You believe in the books, the revelations. What else? The messengers and the... Oh, you believe in the last day or the judgment day. What else? Excellent. You, we believe in the decree of Allah, basically. That's the safest way to put it. The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you consider these, if you consider these, belief in Allah, belief in the last day, and belief in the decree, these are the deepest components of the human soul. These are the deepest components in your heart. Now, the belief in the messengers, belief in the angels, and belief in the revelations, all this has to do with the detailed sharia, with the message that we receive, and that, that tells us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But the three, which I mentioned first, belief in Allah, belief in the last day, and belief in the decree of Allah, these constitute the deepest elements in your psychology as a human being. And this is why Iman is so powerful in the life of, of, of people. This is why it transformed the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, being the most, before that, being the, the lowest nation on earth, the most decadent, the most backward, yet within a few years, becoming the best nation ever brought forth to mankind. Now if you consider these, belief in Allah, it constitutes, Jazakallah khair, this is how, this is the final end, okay, that's it, you see, and if you do it properly, you can get actually four or five people going through that, if you do it precisely, uh, okay. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the reason for which we are created, and for which the heavens and the earth were created. So we are created for a purpose. That means there's a function we are supposed to carry out. So this is our identity. This is the meaning of our existence. And uh, there's a statement that I quoted from Ibn Taymiyyah yesterday. He says, Al-insan muhtahrikun bil-irada. Human beings function by what? By drive. 